today we're going to look at how CO2 is transported away from respiring tissues. There are three main ways it can do this. Around 5% of the CO2 is directly dissolved into the plasma. Around 85% of the carbon dioxide is transported as HCO3- ions, which are hydrogen carbon ions. This is what we'll be talking about today. The remaining 10% combines with haemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. I'm going to start by telling you about the arteries, capillaries and veins. Red blood cells in the blood are travelling from the heart down the artery. Blood is also travelling back up the veins, back to the heart. But between the arteries and veins, we have a network of capillaries. Around the capillaries, we have tissue and muscle. In the capillaries, of course, you have red blood cells. From the tissue's muscle, carbon dioxide is being transported into the red blood cells in the capillaries. So let's zoom in on a red blood cell and see how this happens. So here is the zoomed in red blood cell. The red blood cell is in the capillary. So here is how it works. Carbon dioxide is diffused into the red blood cell. In the cell, it reacts with water. This reaction makes H2CO3. The reaction was catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase. H2CO3 is carbonic acid. From here, the carbonic acid dissociates, which means breaks up, separates, to give H plus hydrogen ions and HCO3 minus hydrogen carbonate ions. Ultimately, the original CO2 we had is now in the form of HCO3 minus ions, which can now happily diffuse out of the cell into the lungs to be breathed out into the air. Please note, all these steps do not happen at the exact same time as you're about to see now. So at a different moment in time, oxyhemoglobin, which is oxygen bound with hemoglobin, dissociates to give hemoglobin and four lots of oxygen molecules. So from here, the oxygen is released into the plasma and into the tissues. Here, the hydrogen ions bond with the haemoglobin to form a haemoglobonic acid. The purpose of this acid is to stop the cell becoming too acidic with all the positive hydrogen ions that are just floating about in there. That's why they're taken up with the haemoglobin. So now we can talk about the Bohr or the Bohr effect, whatever you prefer, and the Bohr slash Bohr shift. The hydrogen ions compete for space with the oxygen and essentially force the oxygen to be kicked out of the red blood cell. So when carbon dioxide is present, this actually means that H plus ions are too, because you're forgetting the CO2 turns into carbonic acid, which then dissociates into hydrogen ions. So this means more hydrogen ions are there. So the hydrogen ions are there to displace the oxygen, forcing it to leave the cell. So basically what I'm saying is, the more respiration taking place means more hydrogen ions are going to be produced. This causes more oxygen to leave the cell. So this means that any particular tension or partial pressure of oxygen. The more CO2 produced means the more oxygen knocked off into the tissues. So this graph shows the saturation with oxygen of haemoglobin and the pressure of oxygen. The blue curve shows a lower partial pressure of CO2 which means there's less CO2 there and the orange curve shows a higher partial pressure of CO2. 